Hey everyone, Jason here, digital marketing consultant, and in this organization guide, everyone's favorite subject, file management. Woohoo! All right, timestamps below, along with some other helpful videos to staying organized and scaling your business with a virtual team. Now, while organizing your files is probably nowhere near the top of your list of things you want to do as a business owner or entrepreneur, I can tell you from personal experience, you're really going to save yourself a lot of time and headache if you think a little methodically about how you're going to organize your Google Drive or whatever file storage solution you decide to use. Now I'm gonna quickly go through why I like Google Drive and a couple of the cons. And if you just want to jump straight into the Quadrant system, here's the timestamp for that. So one of the main reasons I like Google Drive is because when we go to hire new team members, a lot of people are already familiar with how Google Drive works, as opposed to trying to train them on how to use the Microsoft suite of <laughs> business products or going through Box or Dropbox. So on the free plan, of course, you have 15 gigabytes for free, and this is on your own personal. But what's really nice is this 15 gigs only counts on the person who owns the file. So what's really great for us is we're able to share files with contractors and they don't have to purchase an upgraded plan of Google Drive because they're just accessing ours. Not the case with some of the others out there like Box or Dropbox where everyone has to pay for the storage that they're accessing. It's, it feels like you're, you're double paying. And what's also nice is if you use any of the G Suite products like Google Sheets, Google Slides, and Google Docs, like we do a lot, then it actually doesn't even count towards your storage. And of course, if you want to upgrade, I think the plans are very, very reasonable for what you get. Now, of course, the downsides is it's very easy to accidentally share files with the to when you share a folder and then you forget that there's a file in there that you don't want shared. So you really, really do have to be careful with that. And then the biggest downside of using Google Drive is it really is designed to have a really constant good internet connection. It says it has offline stuff, but I can't find anyone on our team who really likes using Google Docs or Google Slides offline, myself included. It's just super, super laggy. So if you need a lot of offline work, you can use Google Drive for with your Microsoft Office files, but you're not going to have a very good user experience using things offline, even if you're using a Chromebook, although that's a whole nother video. I won't go into that. So let's go ahead and jump into our Quadrant system that you can copy for yourself. So we have six main folders. So we have our team folder, we have our content folder, sales funnel folder, or just sales product folder or services folder, and then we have a media library and the oh so important collection box. We'll get to those last two in the very end. You really, really need, if nothing else, you take nothing else from this video, please, please have a collection box. It's gonna save you so much headache. So let's go ahead and go through the team folder first. So inside of the team folder, what we do is we have administrative files. We go ahead and have anything related to project management like hiring. We have our financials and contracts and our timesheets. So let's go ahead and jump into my Google Drive and take a look at how this actually plays out. Now, recently Google Drive allowed for the sharing of specific folders within Team Drives. So we have a little bit of an outdated system and you don't have to do this. But in the past, a Team Drive, if someone had access to it, they had access to everything inside it, which doesn't really work when you want your accountant having one thing and you want our project, your project managers having another. So what we wound up doing is we actually had two Team Drives. So we had all of our personal NDA, the contracts and legal and accounting stuff in one team drive called Founders. And then we had the timesheets and everything else that our managers actually needed to see in our team, in our management team drive that you can see in this screenshot. So luckily you can have just one drive and then give people access to the specific folders they need within that drive. And eventually we'll go ahead and merge them back into one. But that's the reason that we have two different team drives here. Now, something else that you can do if you have a lot of different projects or businesses, what you can do is you can apply this system at the team drive level. And then you can also apply the system in the actual project client or business level. So as an example here, I'm going to go ahead and click on Aspire Entrepreneur, which is all 
all the files for this channel. And of course, the one next to it, Act Marketing, is for our agency. And you'll see inside here, we have all of those same folders. So we have the same folders for the entire company and everything that we work on. And then we have the same folders for the individual, either media properties or big clients that we have. So here we have collection box, team, content, sales funnel, products, and of course the media asset library. So if we go ahead and jump into team here, you'll see that we have folders for each specific team in our company for this particular media property. Now, when it comes to your business, you might have different teams. It might make sense to have an accounting team or management team, and then it might make sense to have a customer service team. And what I like putting here is all of the training and resources. So when you have a new hire or you have some sort of internal processes, this is where all that information is saved. So nothing related to making sales or making new content or anything that's going to be published outside the company ever goes into this team folder. So this is all the internal stuff. So anything that is internal goes in this team folder. So as an example, if we were to click on management here, you'd see a bunch of people's timesheets. And of course, we make sure that the management folder is only shared with someone who should see all the timesheets and then each individual Google uh, Google sheet file, <laughs> I almost said Google Doc, each individual Google Doc or Doc, see I said it anyway, each individual Google sheet file is shared with the person that fills it out and of course whoever is reviewing it. As an example, here's what mine looks like. I just didn't show the folder since we'd have to blur out everybody's names, right? So let's go ahead and talk about the content folder. So for the content folder, this is going to be anything related to content marketing or social media marketing. So if you have a YouTube channel, you have blog, you have a blog, you're just creating things for other social media platforms, that's where all of this information goes. So jumping back into our team drive folder, let's go ahead and click on content. You'll see we have one for archives and then we have one for each of the platforms that we are posting on. We actually don't have a podcast. It was something I wanted to do, but we never got around to it. So, But anyway, so what I like doing is having things by the platform as opposed to by the medium. I've seen other people who really like saying, you know what, I want all of our videos in one place, all of our written content in one place, and all of our audio content in another place. That's totally okay to do it that way too, right? So this is something that you can move flexibly, but what is important is you put all of everything related to content in one place so it's very easy to find. Now, before we dive into YouTube and you'll see how OCD we get with our individual video posts, I do recommend creating an archive folder. And so having yourself or some uh, virtual assistant on your team going through at the end of each week, month or quarter and taking the old content and putting it into to the archive folder. So if we go into the archive folder, you'd see a folder for blogs, you'd see a folder folder for YouTubes and Pint YouTube <laughs> YouTubes YouTube and Pinterest and Instagram. Actually, I don't post on Instagram anymore. So all of our content's in archive there. But essentially the reason that you want to do this is you want to create a separate folder that has all of the old stuff. And that way when you use the desktop version of Google Drive to sync files, you're only syncing the new stuff. And then people on your team can come in here and selectively sync the folders that have the new content. And then that way old content is automatically unsynced. And that way you don't have people who in this particular instance we have over 600 videos, so we don't want that sync to every single person's drive. That would just fill it up, right? So it also helps with making sure you have easy access to current files offline with the automatic syncing that Google can do. Okay, talked way too long about that. Let's go ahead and jump into YouTube. So the other thing I recommend doing is figuring out how you're going to organize your different posts. And so for us, we organize it by category. So each one of our five main content pillars, we create a folder for. You could just as easily just list out all of the content that's currently coming up in the next month or year. So let's go ahead and click on content and I'll go ahead and click on C4 content marketing. And then you'll be able to see all of the files and folders related to that specific video. So all of the raw footage, all of the notes, the graphics, the screenshots, anything related to the creation of this particular YouTube video goes inside this folder. And you can tell I am pretty OCD. You don't have to be this OCD, but I do recommend at least starting with one or two layers for your content organization and having one folder for each one of your posts. So it makes it really easy to go back and find things, which speeds up content creation in the future, of course. 
And so we'll just go through one more example. I'll go back up, I'll click on funnels, and then we'll, we'll click on the B2B lead generation tools video. And again, you'll see the content outline, the thumbnail, the notes. And then of course, if we clicked on each one of these folders, we'd see a bunch more files, everything related to this specific video. So it's always very easy to go back. So that's one of the other things too. You wanna make it super simple to find stuff. That's the whole point of this whole organizing thing. So let's go ahead, go on to sales funnel. I think this is gonna be a lot quicker because generally there's not as many files. So for sales funnel folders, this is gonna be very dependent upon the type of business that you have, right? So in some instances, this could have notes on sales calls. This could be all of the details on advertising, or this could be all of your sales copy for your landing pages and your sales pages, your checkout sequences, and even your emails. So if we jump in here, I'm gonna click on sales funnels. We don't have too many for this specific to this channel, but you can see here we have a folder for a general broadcast list, our sales funnel organizer, which is one of our products. And then we also have a onboarding sequence for a lead magnet, which is the Aspire Notebook. And in that sequence, we offer some other products or services via affiliate links. So everything related to those particular products or email sequences go inside these folders. And next we have product. So inside of the product folder, you're going to have client files, you'll have supplier files if you're dealing with anything with actual physical products, and then of course, any new product ideas, or if you have digital products, all of that information is going to go inside this folder. Now, something I recommend here as we dive in, I'll go ahead and click on products again, and you'll see that we don't have too much here. So I'll go into archive so you can see what we've done in the past. I highly recommend keeping all of these folders internal. If you have a set of things that you need to share with somebody outside of your company, then go ahead and actually create a completely separate folder and call it public client files or shared client files. That way there's never any in there's never any confusion as to whether or not someone has access to your internal product your internal product. So again, I just clicked on archive because that's what's where most of our products for this particular team drive are right now. But just say we're at Aspire Entrepreneur Products. As an example, the AB Authority Builder, that was a course that I put together way, way years and years ago. It did terribly and I hope that it never sees the light of day again. And so that's why it's an archive. Then the next one, Aspire Coaching. I used to have individual coaching clients. So I would put all of the notes on the individual clients that I had inside this folder. So there was a folder for each one of my clients. And of course, these notes were internal. If I wanted to share anything with my coaching students, then I actually had that completely separate folder where we shared and went through those documents. And then this was just my internal notes to help me be a, a, a better coach. And then finally, of course, Tube Machine, that is just another digital product. So all of the raw files, the Excel files, the Google Doc files that went into creating that course and membership website are all stored in that folder. So if I ever need to go back and refer to it again for some reason, it's all there. So that's an example of what you can do with your product folder. So let's go to arguably the most important out of all of these, and that's the collection box. Because guess what? There's going to be times where you just don't really know where to put things or you just don't have time, right? You're busy. You're like, I don't want to click through three or four different things to find it. I'm just going to, I just need to put it somewhere so it doesn't get lost. And that's what the collection box is. It's like that one messy drawer in the kitchen, right? Where it's the catch all, the batteries, rubber bands, masking tapes, notepads, extra pins, flashlight, paper clips, all, all that stuff just goes in that messy, messy drawer, that one messy drawer, right? So that's what this catch all is. So we'll go back into our Google Drive here, click on collection box. And as you can see, it's just a hodgepodge of things. I think the videos we're looking at are at least two or three years old. So I should probably just delete them at this point because we never organize them. But this also allows people on your team to have a place to put things. And if you're not using Google Drive, other storage solutions have this too, where you can actually create links for individual files. So sometimes Sometimes someone will create something, they don't really know where to put it, so they'll just throw it in the collection box and then they'll ping me on Basecamp or if whatever project management tool you're using and saying, hey, I threw this in the collection box because I don't know where it goes. And at least we know where it is and then you can have your spring cleaning, right? Every quarter or every every month, hopefully not every week, but every quarter or every month you go through there and clean things out and you'd be surprised how many things you look and go, oh yeah, we definitely just don't need that anymore. So the final one is going to be the media asset library for things that you do actually need. 
And so this is really helpful if you create a lot of content or you create a lot of assets and you want to be able to easily create more in the future. So whether you do things for clients that you know you can kind of take old work from a client or an old design and it would be helpful with a current one or future ones, or you're just creating content or you're creating graphics for your funnels, then this is where all of those assets go. And the reason I like doing this is it puts everything in one place. So no matter what team someone's on, the blog writer's doing one thing, the advertiser's doing another thing, and then someone's putting together a, a presentation for a client, well, all three of them could probably use the same graphics, right? And so we want to put a media library where everyone from any team and anywhere can go to find graphics, especially if you're paying for graphics. One of the painful things that you can find is sometimes you'll have two or three different people pay for something that's very, very similar, and you're like, why did we do that? We could have just had the, the, you all could have used the same image. It wasn't really that important. So that's what the media asset library allows you to do. Also, it's a great place to store your licensing information, especially if you're doing things on YouTube and you're pulling audio, video clips, or graphics from other different platforms to have one place where you have all that licensing information. So you can be ready for whenever that inevitable copyright claim comes on one of your videos or it becomes an issue on some other platform. So thank Thank you so much for watching. Sincerely hope you got some value out of this video. Most importantly, you have a better idea of how you can use the four quadrant system in your own business or digital agency to of course stay organized. And please, if you do one thing out of this video, just make a collection box. Even if it is an absolute mess, at least you have one system set up. So thank you so much for watching. Again, hit that like button, subscribe for more deep dive organization and productivity videos just like this one, along with some more fun marketing ones. And until the next, keep building the business you love.